so you're on the Medicare program and you're wondering what types of Medicare plans are there? Well, in today's video, I'll answer those questions and how to know which plan might be the best one for you coming up. Aloha, my name is Matt Ragudo and I'm a Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor and I'm certified for long-term care planning. And in this video, I'm gonna cover the different types of Medicare plan options from Medigap plans or Medicare supplement plans all the way through the different types of Medicare Advantage plans. So sit tight, there's a lot of information. Let's get into it. All right, so the first type of Medicare plan is a Medicare supplement plan or Medigap plan. You can go and check the reference down below on the 2020 Medigap Buyer's Guide so you can get the exact information. It's about a little over, I'd say 50, 60 pages, could be more of information from the federal government. But I'll kind of suppress it all and give you what you need to know. So Medicare supplement plans work on top of parts A and B of Medicare. If you wanted to know what Medicare costs, you can go check this video here to find out what those part A and B costs are. But just so that you know, the Medicare supplement plans work with original Medicare. So you need both parts A and B in order to qualify. Medicare supplement plans use to cover your portion of your responsibility to the physician office or to the hospital. Now, the plans need to have or need to be covering a Medicare qualified or Medicare el eligible expense. What does this mean? Well, if for some reason, Medicare in their federal guidelines don't cover this particular service, like routine dental, routine hearing, certain vision services, certain elective surgeries, then the supplement plan will also not cover it. So make sure before you get anything done, to be sure that it falls under the Medicare eligible guidelines. All right, so there's a whole bunch of plan letters, A through F, but really there's only, right now anyway, there's only a few of those letters that really make sense. And the first one is gonna be plan N. This is the leanest of the plans that I recommend. Plan N, as in Nancy, covers the entire part A deductible, for you. So what does this mean? Whatever the Part A deductible cost that costs to get in the hospital covers that 100%. Any co-pays that you have at that hospital once you're admitted also covered. Now in the Part B services of Medicare, that's where there's a little bit of uh, responsibility that you have to retain. And that responsibility is number one, the deductible. Part B has an annual deductible. For this year, in 2020, the annual deductible is $198. That could change, so hopefully there's an updated video if it does change and you're watching this beyond uh, 2020. What a year, right? <laughs> the next thing you have to pay for is a doctor visit copay of up to $20. So if, for some reason, the doctor visit only costs $12, then your responsibility would be $12. But if the doctor visit was $50, your portion now, you would only be liable for $20. So it is a capped amount. And the third thing that you have to worry about is ER visits. Fortunately, the ER visit copay is only up to $50. That's right, five zero. All other Part B services are covered at 100% after you've met that Part B deductible. Pretty awesome. Now the next plan I'm gonna recommend is a Plan G. And Plan G is different from Plan N in two main aspects. The first aspect is Part, or Plan G. Plan G covers you 100% on the Part A deduct, or Part A services, just like Plan N, and after that Part B deductible, so you still have to pay that Part B deductible, but after that, it covers 100% of all services. And the last thing is excess charges. So Plan G covers excess charges. Not many uh, doctors 
charge excess services. That means they don't accept Medicare payment or Medicare assignment. You can go check the video here to find out what excess charges are. But just know that Plan G covers it and Plan N does not. And the last plan that I would recommend only for if you have to choose it because you have some kind of a guarantee issue um, condition, like you have no choice but to choose this plan, is the plan F. Now, plan F is going to be more expensive than plan G. The only difference between G and F is going to be that plan F actually has no deductibles, no copayments at all, but typically cost anywhere from 30 to upwards of $100 per month more than the Plan G counterpart, which doesn't really make sense and doesn't add up because if you look at the mathematical difference between Plan G and Plan F, there is only a 198 annual difference. So if you were to pull that out over the months, if you're paying any more than $20 a month more than the Plan G of the same company or all the companies are pretty much the same as federally standardized, as you can see in the Medigap Buyer's Guide down below. Um, it really makes no sense. And you should if you're in good health. And you don't have to be in perfect health, but just relatively good and stable health. You should look into going either into Plan G or Plan N. One important thing to note, the Medicare supplement plans, is that it is health insurance, which means that every year you can get a rate increase just like long-term care insurance, just like regular employer medical insurance or your group plan when you were at work, every year the cost can go up and it is rated based on age as well. So keep in mind, Medicare supplement plans will get more expensive as not only when you age, but as time goes on. So who's this Medicare supplement plan for? Well, it's for those people who want to retain their ability to use the original Medicare network of doctors and hospitals and avoid any kind of intermingling with the insurance companies. Now you can go and check uh, various quotes if you want. I can reach out to you and I can tell you what plan G and N and F cost in your county because these are all based by counties. You'll notice in where I live in Hawaii, the plans are relatively cheap. But if you head over to Florida, um, and in certain counties in California, the price can be much more expensive based on your location. Now, the plans are standardized to be the same, but the companies and the location, those things change. And I, as an independent broker, can help find the one that works best for you, not only on price, but also strength and stability of the company. So, what again, or who again, is for the Medicare supplements for? It's for people who want to retain their use of the original Medicare network, retain that freedom and flexibility and choice, and also not be married to that drug plan that's tacked on to another private company. So with a Medicare supplement, another cost, you do have to buy a, a drug plan, but, but the drug plan can be tailored to your medications. So that means if you have really low medications, you can get a really inexpensive plan. If you take lots of medications and need to have them all covered, you can choose a little bit more expensive plan. But that is for the later part of the video. Now let's move on to the Medicare Advantage plans or Part C plans. This portion is going to be a very, very different conversation. And I, well, you can watch this video, but I do advise that you speak to somebody who can help you really go through the different nuances and different letterings of all these plans because the first thing we'll go through is one step kind of below the original Medicare network kind of is what's called a PPO network. Under Medicare Advantage plans, there's a PPO heading, which stands for Preferred Provider Organization. What that means is you can see any provider who accepts original Medicare, but you will have to pay more for those providers who are outside of the network. And these plans will typically come with a drug plan attached to it. And if it doesn't, then you are not able to actually get a Part D separate drug plan. So these plans that are Medicare Advantage and don't have a drug plan are for people who have retiree medical that has a, a drug plan attached to it or 
have VA benefits or TRICARE benefits. So like I said, can get confusing, but a PPO network um, of doctors is going to be a better cost share typically than the original Medicare without a supplement. So what does this really look like for you? If you want a PPO plan, um, because you like the benefits included, a lot of times these plans have a lot of bells and whistles added to it and also are going to give you a max out of pocket, which all Medicare Advantage plans give you. So those are the benefits. Next on the list is the Medicare Advantage HMO. So the HMO is a health maintenance organization. And just like how the PPO had a network of doctors, in the HMO model, you actually can only see the network of doctors. So unlike the PPO where you could go and see outside providers, it might cost you more, but in the HMO, you cannot see them at all and get coverage. You can see them, but it'll be 100% out of your own pocket. Original Medicare won't help, won't cover anything because you have attached to an HMO. Now, when would you choose an HMO? If you have only a handful of doctors that you see regularly, and you have a great relationship with your primary care doctor, because again, the HMO, you will need referrals whenever you see a doctor who is not your primary. So please keep those things in mind. And like I said, always talk to somebody. I'm a licensed broker who helps people with Medicare plans, Medicare supplement, Medicare Advantage, Medicare uh, drug plans. So please reach out to me or someone in your area that can help you make these decisions. The last type of plan that I'm going to cover while there are a few more is what's called an Medicare savings account, an MSA plan. The reason I'm covering this plan is because MSA plans are relatively new and what they are is um, kind of like if you ever heard of a HDHP, a high deductible health plan, those plans that let you save into an HSA. I know um, Dave Ramsey talks about a lot. A lot of financial gurus on TV talk about these high deductible health plans a lot. And what the MSA does is it allows you to see any provider who accepts Medicare and the MSA is a high deductible account. Typically, you're looking at seven to eight thousand dollar deductible, but every year the MSA company shoots into your account like about two thousand three hundred dollars, depending on your location. So that amount is going to differ depending again on your location. And what this uh, kind of gives you is a buffer between the deductible and how much you have to pay out of pocket. Once you meet that deductible, same like all the other high deductible health plans, you have a zero cost share after that, but you will have to eat through about 6,000 of your own savings. In this type of plan, even though it's a Medicare Advantage plan, you actually can buy a standalone drug plan. So in conclusion, Medicare Advantage plans, well, the first two are the HMO and the PPO. I would highly suggest choosing the PPO if you want it just a little bit less expense than the Medicare supplement plan, but still retain a lot of that flexibility. Always work with an agent who can help you with any kind of the eligibility questions, PA questions, working with the insurance company to get services covered. It's always a bonus when you do have a Medicare Advantage plan. You do have somebody that can help you. The HMO side, same thing but a little bit more restrictions. I'll be honest, I typically like using the PPO programs um, unless, you know, it really was a financial strain on the uh, the client, but just because the HMO does uh, have a lot more legwork um, for sometimes even the physicians to take care of, so it does lead to some uh, barriers to getting, you know, care quickly. And the MSA, well, the MSA is you're going to have to be a savvy saver and also understand where your liability is and how much things cost. Because unlike original Medicare, high deductible plans where you still have original Medicare in a Medicare savings account plan, sorry, you actually don't have original Medicare at all. You are responsible for 100% of that hospital bill up until you meet your deductible. So... What, in conclusion, can I say about Medicare plans? Always, always, always do your homework. Educate yourself. Talk to someone who is an independent broker who works for multiple or works with 
multiple different insurance companies who has a little bit of time in the industry who can really assist you in making the best choice for you remember there are great plans out there and there are not so great plans out there choosing the best one for you though is going to take a little bit of navigation and a little bit of kind of uh, legwork on both your side and the broker side uh, to be able to give you that and how do you do that well Preferably a list of all your physicians, that helps. A list of all the medications you take and the dosage, of course. And then any, you know, anything medical that you are comfortable with disclosing because some plans have a great hospital benefit. Some plans have a great outpatient surgery benefit. Some plans have a great PCP visit choice. If you see your primary care doctor every two weeks for ongoing labs, hey, maybe we want to pick a plan that has a low primary care doctor visit fee, right? Or if we have upcoming surgery, maybe we want to make sure that the plan is a PPO plan so we don't have to do too much of that paperwork and a plan that has outpatient surgery, co-insurance or co-pays at a lower rate than the competition. And these plans change every year. Medicare supplement plans, of course, in the beginning we talked about those don't change every year, but you can get rewritten if you are healthy any time of the year. So please always work with somebody who can assist you and can help you whenever you have questions. Now, if you guys have any questions for me, please leave them down below in the comments, or you can send me a email at the email listed here. Now, I look forward to helping you in anything else. If you do need help with retirement planning topics like 401k, Medicare, or long-term care, you can go and click on the videos on the screen now. All right, you guys have a magical day, and I'll see you in the next video.